21-year-old Julie Ann Gonzalez lived in Dripping Springs, Texas in 2010. She was married to George de la Cruz, but they were estranged and not living together. The two were in the middle of getting a divorce. Julie and George had a young daughter named Layla together, who was about two years old at the time. Julia was always busy with her job as a pharmacy technician going to school and spending time with her daughter. She was described as hardworking and a kind-hearted person. Julie's loved ones stated how she had embraced her motherly duties and was bringing her child up independently. On March 26th of 2010, Julie was last seen by George. He said that Julie had come over to drop their daughter off as they shared custody of her. Julie's aunt, Dora Soto, expected Julie to contact her that day, but she did not. Dora tried to reach her, but failed to do so. When she did not respond to texts and calls, her family began to wonder. Julie's aunt, her mom Sandra, and sister Samantha spoke to George. George claimed that Julie told him she was going away for a few days on a trip. They all said that Julie would not have left behind her daughter and would have at least told one family member that she was leaving. Julie's family said her daughter was her world and she would never leave her behind. Julie was also very reliable and in constant contact with her family. By 11 p.m. that night, Julie's aunt and mom reported her missing to the Austin, Texas police. The police did not have any evidence that Julie hadn't left of her own accord. They said that she was an adult and was allowed to leave. Julie's mom and aunt mentioned that her new car was also missing. The next day, on March 27th of 2010, Julie's family and her new boyfriend, Aaron, were receiving text messages from her. Julie's sister believed it was her as she had referred to her by her nickname. Julie's aunt, mom, and boyfriend weren't so sure. Aaron had just received a message from Julie that she was breaking up with him. Her mom was shocked because Julie was madly in love with him. Julie, or someone using her phone, had also posted a message on Facebook that she was depressed and posted some messages to her MySpace page. On MySpace, Julie had wrote that she had met a man named James in Colorado and couldn't wait to start her life over there. Julie's aunt and mom knew that these messages weren't Julie. Julie would not have left her daughter, and it wasn't how she would write. Aaron asked Julie to tell him what his middle name was. The person on the other end said they don't have time for games and never sent any other messages to Julie's family members. Investigators still weren't sure if she left on her own or if foul play was involved. But they did speak to George, as he was the last person who saw Julie alive. George only told them that Julie dropped off their daughter and then she left abruptly. Julie's family began their own investigation. Her aunt went driving around South Austin and spotted Julie's new car in the parking lot of a Walgreens. Her aunt ran inside, looked all over the store for Julie, but she was nowhere to be found. Concerned about what she could find, Julie's aunt contacted Julie's mother. Together, they checked Julie's trunk but didn't find her. They did spot a paper bag in the back seat, which had asthma medication inside for Julie's daughter. It wasn't like Julie to not give George such an important medication for their own daughter. Julie's family asked one of the employees inside Walgreens if Julie had been there. They showed him a picture and he said she looked familiar. They also asked him if he knew anything about the car outside. He said that a girl had entered the store and she said she was having car issues. The police obtained the surveillance footage from Walgreens. There were several women that matched the description of Julie, but Julie herself had not entered the store. Julie's family then plastered the city with a billboard, posters, and handed out t-shirts with Julie's picture on them. The police looked at Julie's phone records and social media accounts. Her phone and social media had gone quiet. It hadn't been used since March 27th of 2010, the day after she was last seen. George's mom, Victoria de la Cruz, made a frantic phone call to the police. 
she asked them to come to her house. Victoria called them because she had found a large hole in the storage shed of the home she shared with her son. Victoria told them that she started to dig, but then she got scared and decided it's best to call the police. When detectives arrived, Victoria was covered in dirt and was clearly shaken. The hole that she had contacted them about looked eerily like a grave. George told the police that the hole was an electrical trench. Investigators decided to dig anyway, but found no sign of Julie in the hole. The police obtained Julie's bank records. They found that on the day Julie was last seen, George had used her card at Walmart and Best Buy. George had purchased an Xbox points card at Best Buy because he had an obsession with video games. His obsession was one of the reasons he and Julie got divorced. George would have rather stayed home all day to play video games than to work and earn money. Victoria gave the police permission to search the house. Inside, they found the purchases from both stores and a receipt from Best Buy. The police obtained the surveillance footage from both stores. They saw George with his daughter at both stores. Jim Cook, a wireless expert, examined George's phone to map out his movements on March 26th of 2010. He also compared them to Julie's phone. Julie and George's phones both moved together, which proved that George had possession of her phone. George had also accessed his MySpace page and Julia's page from the same IP address. The police also looked at George's Xbox activity. George was known to play video games for around 12 to 15 hours a day. On March 26th, he hadn't played for about 20 hours. The police believed George had done something to Julie, but they did not have much evidence to even prove that she was not alive anymore. Unfortunately, the case then went cold for some time. For three years, Julie's family waited for answers and had to share custody with George. Julie's mom asked George constantly if Julie was going to come back. George always told her she was going to someday. Finally, on September 13th of 2013, George de la Cruz was arrested and charged with taking Julie Ann Gonzalez's life. The prosecution offered George a reduced sentence of 50 years if he cooperated and told them where Julie's body was. George always denied being involved. He rejected the offer and decided to plead not guilty. George's trial began in April of 2015. George never showed remorse, but seemed nervous. The prosecution didn't have a body, but needed to convince the jury that Julie was never coming back. They said a knife, ammunition, and some clothing that appeared to have been burned was also found in the De La Cruz's backyard and shed. Yet, defense lawyer Robert McCabe and Keith Lowerman contended that prosecutors had left too many loose ends and too many unanswered questions. They attacked the state expert's analysis, raised questions about its witnesses, and said the timeline prosecutors had offered was impossible. George de la Cruz, who was described as an immature and irresponsible heavy video game player, would not have had the time or wherewithal to clean his home, dispose of his estranged wife's remains, and dig a hole in his backyard to bury her, all before he was captured on security camera footage shopping with their daughter, McCabe said. Convictions are about knowledge, the attorney argued. You convict on fact, not fantasy. You convict on logic, not emotions. When you don't, he told jurors, innocent people end up in prison. On April 22nd of 2015, George de la Cruz was found guilty. He put his head down while Julie's family celebrated. In October of 2016, 27-year-old George was sentenced to life in prison. At present, he remains incarcerated at the Jim Ferguson Unit in unincorporated Madison County, Texas. He will be eligible for parole in the year 2043. Julie's family said that they are praying that George will someday tell them where Julie is. They hope that he will let his daughter know what really happened to her mom. In February of 2023, 
the house belonging to Julie's mother, Sandra Soto, burned down. She and her family were able to get out safely after being woken up by their dog. However, the house was destroyed and they lost everything. A benefit was held at Jack's Roadhouse in San Marcos to help the family. The benefit featured homemade barbecue and live music. The family was encouraged by the support they've gotten from total strangers as they deal with this latest setback. Julie's sister Samantha Petrie said, We have been through a lot and at first when I got the news I did think this was just one more thing being thrown at us. Today. It really shows that not just love and support from our family and our friends, but people that know the story of my sister Julie Ann Gonzalez, that they do not forget about our family and they don't forget about her story.